What's up guys, today I'll just be going over a couple changes that have taken effect in Godot 4.0 and I'll also provide a couple tips and tricks just to improve your overall workflow in Godot 4.0. Now I do want to mention that a couple of these topics are a bit abstract, but this is simply because a lot of people are going over these topics lately with the release of 4.0 obviously, so I just wanted to provide a couple quick things that you may not know. So the first thing I wanted to mention, this one is pretty obvious, but it is very essential going into Gato 4.0, and that is the on ready and export keywords actually require the at sign before them. So instead of previously where you type on ready var and then, you know, etc., you actually have to insert an at sign before that. So you would write at on ready var and continue from there. Now, obviously, this also applies to export variables. So to write an export variable, it is now at export var test to equals none. <laughs> now there's also another really cool trick that you can do in Godot 4.0 to get nodes in your scene tree, which is pretty efficient in my opinion, and it uses the export system. How this works is, let's say in this world script, I wanted to get this icon node. Now what I could do is instead of writing, you know, at on ready var icon equals, and then you would get the node and write icon, you can actually write at export var and then this would be the variable name, which is icon. And then you can actually just set this to a basic class. In this case, we're going to always be getting a sprite for this specific icon variable. So you could just set it to the sprite class, sprite2d. And now our export variable will be in the inspector. When we click on the world here, we can see the icon export variable, and it will automatically have a node path property, which we can assign only to sprite2ds. And this will access our node in our scene tree which is, in my opinion, more efficient than writing an onready variable every time you want to get a node in your scene tree, especially if you're going to be changing the paths a lot. But obviously, if it's more efficient in your scenario, it is still viable to use the old method or the other method per se, that being this line up here. Now, another really important thing that happened in Godot 4.0, which I actually had a really hard time finding the answer to, so I wanted to share this one with you guys. If you're using pixel art, you would normally go to the import tab here when you import your pixel art and you would set the filter to none because Godot automatically applies a texture filter that interpolates the pixels into the result. But that property in the import tab has actually been moved into a property in the canvas item class. So for an example here, if I was to import this wood texture that I have, which is very clearly pixel art, um, you can see it's really blurry on the screen right here. And in order to fix that, you would go over to the inspector tab instead. And under the canvas item, you can go to texture. And under the filter, you can just set that to nearest. Now, what nearest will do is it will display the absolute nearest pixel for the texture filtering. Um, obviously, if you're doing like higher quality images or SVGs or something, you'd want to set this to linear, which takes it from the surrounding four pixels of the nearest. And obviously, you can also apply the logic to work with mipmaps as well. Now, another really cool feature in Godot 4.0 is the custom documentation generation feature. So what this means is, let's say I created a new node in here, and this was my new class. Now on this test class script, if I had the class extend a node, and then I set the class name, I will then be able to add any comments to this script, which will populate into the built-in Godot documentation. So if I'm looking at old code or anything or old methods, I'll be able to quickly decipher what they do because that is really hard to do sometimes. But this system actually makes it way easier. So in order to mark a line as an entry for the documentation generator, you simply type two hashtags. So just like this. And if a line is above a method or a property, it will act as a description for that value that it is above. So in this case, if we wanted to add a description for our test class, we write two hashtags 
hashtags at the top and we can simply write a description for it. And now if we search for this new class we made, which is called test class, you can see it right here. It'll open up the documentation and you can see that our description worked perfectly inside of our test class. This also works with properties. So if we have a new variable here called like, I don't know, something, and we set this to, I don't know, true or something, we could then go above this line, write two hashtags again, and set a description for this property. And if we go back into our test class in the documentation, you can see that we have properties here, and under the property descriptions, you can see that our description worked as well. Now, obviously, this also works with methods, and as you can see, it's pretty much the same workflow, and it will update in the documentation as well. Now, another really cool feature that has been added is the ability to detach any windows. So if you've spent any amount of time in Godot, you've probably clicked these three dots at the top of every window, and you can see that you can kind of like position the windows, you can put them side by side and whatever, but this is pretty limiting until now where you can actually detach this window into a floating window. So if I go up to the three dots on any window, let's do the inspector, we can actually click this make floating button and we now have a separate window. So this is good if you have like two monitors, you can just drag this over. And especially for 3D game development, where you want a lot of space in your viewport to see the 3D world, obviously, this can be really helpful just to free up space and give you more real estate. Now, another pretty minor feature, but still very helpful for certain cases is the color picker. So if you look over here on the right hand side, the color picker UI has been improved a lot. And it's a lot easier to copy the GD script color as well as the hex value down here. Now there's also a couple new tabs here. The first one is recent colors, which is really helpful if you have a lot of colors you're trying to use in your game. You can actually just like click these, which is a lot nicer than I initially thought it would be. And then we also have swatches. I literally have never heard that word in my life, but um, <laughs> essentially you can add color presets down here. If I wanted to, you know, add white as a preset, all I do is click the plus down here and you can kind of create a palette for your game which is really helpful and really easy to do now and then the very last thing i wanted to mention was actually the new tweening system and i won't go into detail on this video but i do have a tutorial that i made on tweening in godot 4.0 and you can just go check that out since there is a lot of very valuable and vital information since it is now mandatory to kind of switch over to that new way of doing it but it is a very optimized way and i I personally like it a lot more than the old way of tweening, which is a good thing, uh, right? Improvement. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.